Hello and welcome to EFAP Super Chat Catch Up EFAP Mini Flim Flim Flam Flom uh, The Drinker YMS episode I forget which number, it'll be in the title Beautiful I figure we'll just jump right into it Plenty of messages <clears throat> Best to start now rather than later I suppose The first one is Thoughts on Mulholland Drive I don't know what that is I haven't seen it in a long time But uh, I remember thinking it was pretty good so that's all I, I got. Well, there you go. Uh, if I'm correct, it's, mm, I forget the other girl's name, but Naomi Watts is in it. Uh, when did it come out? 2001. Remember, Good times. Yeah, it's a David Lynch movie. A classic, I'm sure. Impossible. This must be a fake fap. On a Friday? How dare you all? Shame, shame, shame. On another note, are you excited for Andor Season 2 with all the news? Um, I don't think... I don't know what news, but... No matter what news there would be, I'd be anxious about a Season 2 anyway, as I am with anything. Yeah, I'm I interested. Yeah. want to be good. <laughs> but, uh... Mm. You know, because I want good endings, interesting endings for all the different characters we've come to meet. But who knows what'll happen. What if the studio are like, you need some more Vader in there? You need some lightsabers, we need less bricks. Mm-hmm. In fact, for every light, like, you're allowed five bricks per lightsaber, so you gotta, gotta <laughs> balance it out. <laughs> like, damn. Yeah. Um, you get into that Watch Together, Watch Together goes on the internet, you go on the internet, Sharks go on the internet, Our Shark, Jaws, EFAP, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas. Oh, wow. Really wants that Jaws EFAP. Who knows? Maybe one day. Maybe. Could have a shark. Why not? It would make sense. The name is perfect. XQC sounds like he's blitzed on amphetamines. Maybe he is. You know, everyone is free to do that if they wish, I suppose. Uh, Mola, did you see the XQC Ethan meme vid on Discord? I tagged you. It's rather funny if I say so myself. I may have. I may not have. I'm not sure. Since this was a bit ago, you know. Um, I think a 100% playthrough of Kirby 64 would be a fun weekly stream. Fringolius Kerbongolosis of Neophlemortis Crystallis Shardinja down undus. I, uh... I guess they want I, you to do I, it. I can't really make sense of that, I gotta say. They want you to play Kirby, um, weekly. Oh, well, I, I, I played... Well, I'm not... I mean, that's not gonna happen, but I, I did play, uh... I did play um, good old uh, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, and that was yeah, a fun game. That was good memes. Did he end up remembering the land by the end? Uh, I don't think he forgot it. Oh. I, I don't think that's. I don't. I don't quite think that's what. Uh, that's what happened there. Well, then I'm glad. I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think Drinker's reviews are all perfect, but not all bad. Though I'm curious how this will go. Guess I'll hold off on crisping my critters. Fair enough. Hi, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas, and I think it'll be good to follow Wilford Brimley's advice and start an oatmeal fund. Sure. Some people really oatmeal like oatmeal. Fund. Oatmeal's gonna be alright. Yeah. There you go. So, if you don't agree that the f uh, that fan base determines the quality of a franchise, does that mean that the sequel trilogy is not bad by that logic? If you don't agree... That fan base, well, fan bases don't determine the quality of a franchise, surely. No, I don't determine it. it. It is what it is. It's determined by... Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas, and I say that McCready is a jerk. What if someone else wanted to play chess wizard, huh? Like me, gay actor Michael Douglas, hmm? Um, yeah, fair enough, man. I hope you get to play the chess wizard. Uh, yeah. You know, I hope you knock it out of the park. Bringy, which is better, the Crash or Spyro trilogy? Um, problem is you can't really ask me that because I'm biased in favor of Crash. Like, I think Spyro is cool. I like Spyro, but um, yeah, Crash is <laughs> Crash is is my game. That's uh, he's my lad. But he's a good lad. Um, so I'd probably say the I'd just say Crash, but that's because I like Crash more than Spyro. Spyro is cool though, and that was a cool uh, that was a cool trilogy. Um, in Jaws, right when Michael comes in with a bloody cut on his hand, Brody gets the call about the shark attack. Also, as he's being told about the attack on the phone, Michael asks Alan, can I go swimming? 
Okay. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with all of that. All but right, fair then. enough. Episode 147 is the start of the React War. Episode 247 is XQC. Coincidence? Who knows? You know, the Earth, uh, the, this world of ours, it's crazy. All kinds of things will happen. Lord Longbong of Mutualington Abbey. Is there a good chance of a Kong fap? Of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on, it'd be a movie fap for the ages. P.S. Hello, Wagsy. Scritches for the good boy. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, I did play the Long Kong game, and then I played a different Long Kong game. Not for very long, though. Uh, I assume it wouldn't be enough to sate your desires, but um, I think it was called something like Skull Island Rise of Kong or, so or something. Being lauded as possibly the worst game of the year in a year that Gollum came out. So. It's like 18... Is that what it's called? I thought it was like 1835 or something. Like Kong 1835. No. Uh, I think it's called Skull Island... Lord of Kong, Rise of Kong, it's something, it's like... Lord of Kong, that just makes me <laughs> laugh now. <laughs> it just makes me think of Lord of Ring. <laughs> Hi, Rags. Hello. XQC is like mind cancer. He hurts my ideas. Damn. That's, that's terrible. I hope you made it, you know? Protect those ideas. Two and a half hour video on EFAP? Well, shit, might as well call Wix. I'm not leaving this seat for a week. Oh my. Make sure you don't get sores or whatever, okay? Make sure to drink plenty of water. Yeah, bad sores are, uh, they're a, they're a scary thing. So, EFAP will never conclude its Batwoman show. You know, when we do, I expect every person who's made that <laughs> statement right. to send a message apologizing for being so wrong. Alright? Just remember. Because it'll happen. We finished other things. I finally wait, I streamed it, all wait, of you Sekiro. Cut out. What did you say? Uh, it, the thing is, it's it's awkward, Rags, because it's okay if he cuts out because it all gets caught on his end. But then yeah. we no, have but to... I want to know what he like me. One <laughs> no, of the co-hosts I, I, I would like to know what I he understand. said. I get it. It's just that you know, it's it's. Flow, he can just repeat know? himself brief, briefly. I haven't no, been he, able to speak. Could. <laughs> he could. He could. That's yeah. That's totally fine. I said that uh, I hope everybody who sends the messages that we don't or won't commit to finishing Batwoman is going to apologize and uh, pull back all their statements as soon as they see the last Batwoman episode. I don't even know. We've consistently released two per year, okay? By that metric, it's going to come out relatively eventually. All right? Mm -hmm. You get your Batwoman. You'll get your Batwoman. Uh, YMS's video seemed pretty tame when I saw it. He didn't really commit to anything that controversial. You Dumbos, however, should commit to playing DDLC. He said some pretty <laughs> fucking controversial stuff, like with the Indiana Jones stuff. That shit's nuts. There's plenty of controversial That's things insane. from a media perspective and, uh, you know, more meta. Hi, Vringy. Oh, hi. Stop being bald. I'm not bald. Man bald. Bad. I'm big boned. Oh. Love that Oppenheimer ending was in Robert's head a potential for a swayal where he may refuse to build the bomb. Rags, Bible verse of the day? Um, I could take a look. All right. All righty. Give me a second here. Bible verse of the day. I don't even know what site. Bible verse of the day? I'll just Google that and see what happens. Oh. Trinitychurch.org pops up first with Bible verse of the day. But it's like, no, how, why would you say Bible verse of the day? It's to fuck Trinity Church. I'll go to Bible verse of the day from Marian Medical Mission. There you go. All right. It's not showing it to me. It wants me to sign up for daily devotions. God damn it, Christians. <laughs> Get your shit together. I'll go oh to go.thelifechurch.com. <sighs> Shouldn't have to work well, this Well, this hard. isn't like of the day. It's like... Here, jesusdoll.com, 61 best Bible verses to, Bible verse of the day. Okay, finally, it took me like six goddamn links. Oh, it, gets, it says I have to allow ads in order to see it. <laughs> okay, your Bible verse of the day.com. Surely verse of the day.com has their shit together. Okay, <laughs> Acts 14. Barnabas and Paul preached the good news in that city and won a large number of, number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. 
All right. Well, there's, there's not much you can get out of that one. It's just like they did some stuff. I agree. So, yeah. Um. Okay. Anyway, sorry. I was, uh, I was just moving the page. Uh, his review of Arcane is fantastic. I don't know if that's referring to YMS or Drinker or both, perhaps. Because uh, I know I think both of them have reviewed. Oh no, wait. YMS only didn't didn't you didn't you only watched the first two episodes of the season, so must be talking about Drinker. Uh, yeah. Not sure. Um, ask YMS about his opinions on God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> They really... Oh, yeah, he thinks the soundtrack's shit or something. I'm pretty sure he's he thinks got, the game is shit. Of... God, what a dumbass. Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, I, you know, there was, we had plenty of uh, hardcore media disagreements in that stream. Um, I just Jordan. don't understand. He's not a fan of Bear McCreary, apparently, which is strange, because uh, I'm more than willing to agree that he has, like, lesser soundtracks that he's made, but some of his best stuff is fucking great. Um, Ragnarok mm -hmm. is insanely good. As a game, well, I guess not as a game. I, I don't can't vouch for that myself, but like the music was stellar for it. Good day, Mubeshly, Raggington, and Fringo. Good day. Hi. Oh, hi there. Yeah. <laughs> How good or bad do you think Inside Out and Incredible Twos are? Incredibles Two are and why? Um, I don't know about Inside um, Out. Inside I Out seen is it. like Inside Out is is like totally fine it's it's a fine movie it's okay um i remember that when it came out it was being heralded as like pixar's best movie since up mm. which is like you know i don't even know what that means uh, their best since well up, up well, well fine too the thing, right? yeah but you gotta remember that the popular consensus is that up is one of their best movies oh it's so definitely not no i don't think so but you know but but i i think up's better than inside out personally i think up's got more going for it um, but yeah, Inside Out is just like, it's, it's okay. It's fine. It's, eh, you know, pretty normal. Uh, Incredibles 2 is awful. <laughs> yeah, I hate Incredibles terrible, 2. Terrible, terrible, sequel to one of the best films ever made. Yeah, Incredibles 2 sucks. Mm hmm It's like, it's a great example of, like, we don't know what to do. It's a great so example. So let's just, like, point. undo everything that, like, the Incredibles did with the characters. Let's just revert everybody. Let's just kind of ruin a bunch of stuff. Let's make the plot not really make much sense. It's a great example of don't. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Quit. Just do something yeah. else. That's what Pixar used to be all about, right? Yeah. You know? well, yeah, that's right. I think now Inside sequel, Out sequel, sequel, was sequel, their sequel. next film, by the way. <laughs> I think that's their next movie. Um, oh, oh, okay. Also, have you seen Sound of Freedom? It's good. I have not. I have not seen Sound of Freedom. I haven't seen Freedom, it. No. Um, because it's in almost every movie now. Oh, it's in all caps. I, I don't know what exactly they're referring to, but sure. Because it could be a couple things. Not sure. Uh, my biggest takeaway from Drinker's detractors is that they never watch his videos. Yeah. Um, um, yes. Does that, does that shock you at all? Detractors. It's like, uh, it's uh, something that I think Destiny talked about in one of his videos that um, he, has, he has a guest on that asks him, how is it possible that uh, the sort of picture someone paints of you in just like one adjacent community is someone that I don't even recognize like whatsoever. And then he just explained like, yeah, there's plenty of people who are actively poised against like th th their interests are completely uh, crossed over with his. So it benefits them to like do as much painting of like this devil person as possible. And um, it all gets broken. The second the audiences just check out one thing instead of clips, it's always clips that'll get you. Well, it's like the, the Jenny Nichols thing was going around. Uh, yeah. Even though that wasn't people watching it, it. They, yeah, they didn't, those people weren't even watching it. They were just showing the screenshot. Yeah, they, it's just the, the screenshot of the thumbnails. Based on it and the meta. I remember yeah, when it was first happening. People who one stuck of them... around and actually watched it. A lot of people were like, oh, I actually watched them. Uh, this is reasonable and fun. Yeah, it, it's totally normal. and fun. It, it, The thing is, I remember thinking to myself, like, do you think we could actually just... What are we gonna say for eleven hours about how much we hate women? That's so weird. <laughs> like, was... Not even I could talk about that for eleven hours. It's I get boring. Bored after, like, <laughs> yeah. Man, women don't they suck? And it's just like, yeah, yeah. All right, hit play. <laughs> and then pause and say the same thing. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a commonality. Um, the curse that EFAP has to go through is we actually do watch the videos. That's like our whole thing. We watch the person's videos and then we say, wow, those aren't good, or wow, those are good. Or wow, that was fine. We get all of them. 
I unsubbed from Drinker when within weeks of each other. He moaned about Hollywood re remakes, then complained they don't make enough films like the Mummy remake with Brendan Fraser. Fun isn't allowed. You couldn't figure out what he's saying with those two statements? What do you think's happening there? Do you think that he didn't realize that he's a hypocrite and that he wants remakes but also doesn't want remakes? Or do you think that he'd be absolutely fine with remakes if they were good? That could be it. That'll be my assumption. Mm -hmm. The Mummy with Brendan Fraser is awesome. Uh, the Mummy with Tom Cruise is shite. <laughs> I've never seen that. The, and the thing is, the Brendan Fraser one is a remake of like the Hammer film, right? The classic sort of horror. There's even references to it in there. In the same I've never vein, seen the original, so it'd be fun to check that out. Like the um, yeah, I wouldn't mind. Though there are there are plenty of things that could be remade, and if done well, would be awesome. But these days, the whole reason that we'd be against a remake is just because of how bad remakes are. If, you know, it's, it's very, very straightforward. I don't, I don't see that as an inconsistency at all. Um, I think Drinker more refers to Hollywood as stagnant and corporate. Being woke is a symptom of corporate stagnation. Uh, sure? I mean, it's going to be different for everybody, depending on definitions. No, Mola. He said, Drinker creates content that appeals to people from an entertainment perspective. He's talking about the audience, not you, I think. I don't know how so many people had trouble with this, including YMS, but what happened was uh, YMS says that Drinker's channel, and possibly Drinker herself, I didn't confirm that necessarily, much more interested in film as entertainment than film as an art form. And I um, took issue with yeah. that significantly. And then I said, yeah. do you think that about us? Because obviously I'm trying to connect the me and Drinker slash us and Drinker, we have a very similar POV on a lot of stuff. Do you think that we are invested in art, of the art of movies or the, the entertainment movies? And then YMS and several people were like, he didn't say you. It's like, I didn't, I didn't say he did say me. I'm asking if it would apply. I don't know why so many people had trouble with that. I didn't think I had to like walk through step by step, you know? I'm just curious if the standard would have applied as well. But I also don't buy that Drinker isn't invested in the art form. I think that's ridiculous. As for the audience members, I mean, you know, there's going to be people who are only fans of film as entertainment or whatever and don't care at all about the art form who are in loads of people's audiences who care about the art form. You know, it's a complete mixed bag. You can get everybody everywhere. Every time I take a poo, it's art. What do you think, Rex? Does that count? Mm, nope. What if you do it with a lot of intention? <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's, I think that's all my poos, though. That's well, like, I'm movies. not intending to simply poo, I'm intending to create an image by smearing it onto a page of paper. Oh, that's different. I thought you meant, like, contracting your anus in such no, a way. No, I'm, I'm, I want to express myself with my poops. Then. Yeah, you, if you paint a picture using poo as the medium, then yes, that is art. Oh, there we go, sweet. Uh, chat is building a cross for you, YMS. You've been judged to be cringe. A lot of you felt he was very cringe, then. It's, uh, cringe. Yes. Art is the QXquisite care of execution. It's no so subjective like so many people believe it is. I'm not sure what word that was supposed to be. I don't know be. what any of that means, honestly. Oh, art is the exquisite care of execution. I don't even agree with that. No. The exquisite it, care it of could, it? It could no. be not exquisite at all. It could be haphazard and yeah. crap. And it's yeah, still I would say that art can be... Jackson Pollock made art. It was just shitty. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I, I think certain, you know, things that are artistic like can even when, be, like, subconscious, yeah, like, potentially. I, I, yeah, don't, yeah. I don't know what these, like, when it's so laden with these sorts of terms, like, exquisite care, like... I, I don't feel like you're gonna create any consistent... I'm happy if you want to use that for, you know? like, great works and stuff, yeah, sure, but, like, you can't... Just because something's really bad, you can't be like, it's not art anymore. Like, right. Yeah, it's... It's not how it works. Drinker has many reviews about older slash more obscure movies, not just current Disney drivel. Anyone who says otherwise clearly hasn't watched his content. Agreed. Mm. Yeah. Indeed. This one says, The Message. Dun dun dun. Nostalgia bum, Critic bum, bum. indirectly reaffirms anti-Western, anti-capitalist viewpoints, but it's only a problem when a person's implied compliments swing the wrong way. Um... I think that makes sense, though. Uh, if... If you consider your values to be very much normal, you might not even notice that they're being expressed. 
Meanwhile, the ones we consider abnormal, we would then almost consider propaganda in the form of like media and characters promoting that particular thing, depending on how horrible or far away it is from your own values. And then that goes around the whole circle of all the different people with all the different values. Obviously, um, you know, who knows what things will look like in a you know two hundred years, and it might be that there are films out today that we consider incredible that in two hundred years all of civilization can't watch because it's so disgusting that they would ever do the things that they're doing in that movie, and we'll be like, what? You know, that's sort of. I guess I'm just trying to get across that um, it would be acceptable to some people for certain points of view to be expressed, while a whole other group would be like, whoa, that's fucking horrible. I think a good example would probably be there's plenty of people who watch Michael Bay movies and be like, that was fucking awesome, and then people would be like, this is propaganda for the military. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's like, those two groups would look at each other like, what the fuck? Uh, throw the damn towel, Adam. I believe this is a boxing reference. But it'd be throw in the towel, right? Not just throw the Not towel. Not just throw it. You don't throw, throw it Throw the anywhere. damn towel you know, at him? Like, yeah, throw <laughs> yeah, in the towel. Yeah. Is like a throw yeah, the to towel. Quit. I mean, yeah. Just throw it in general. I like the idea that they, yeah, just throw it. It doesn't matter where. Throw the towel at the other person. Congratulations, Adam. In your assumptions, you've achieved acute social myopia. Myopia? Myopia? I think it's myopia. I don't know. <laughs> mm. uh, Adam is the pure elitist straw man. He's a. I imagine that uh, people aren't going to be happy with Adam in these messages. That's, what's, that's what we're to expect. Um, bro, mass destruction of male characters isn't a conspiracy theory. What a clown to your take, lol. I genuinely feel at this point that South Park having lampooned it makes it impossible to be a conspiracy theory. Yeah. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> the point, cat is out of know. the bag. This guy didn't get into film production and got stuck slumming it in critical studies. Uh. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. Critical studies is probably good as well, right? You study critically? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know what that <laughs> is. What is critical studies? We well, study stuff critically, which Will is you great. Study just anything in general? Sure. Go for it. Hmm. Conspiracy theorist is a throwaway term to preemptively dismiss someone's idea without actually engaging with it, a non argument. If, um,. I don't know, you, you usually say conspiracy theorist or conspiracy theory about something that's just not very well supported, only vaguely supported. Mm. Obviously what's crazy about it is, uh, if we're talking about, like, the state of what's happening to, like, the, the injection or obsession with trying to involve female characters or something like that, um, well then... It would just be like, okay, well, uh, you know, we can take Star Wars, and then someone would sigh and be like, not everything is Star Wars. Like, okay, fine, fine, Marvel. And it's like, oh, not everything's Marvel. And you're like, okay, fine. Indiana Jones is like, no, 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 we don't everything. And you're like, okay, Willow. It's like, no, not everything. You're like, how many do I have to label before it stops being like you're just looking at mainstream, or you just, even though the point is about mainstream, um, or that it's too many about Disney, or if it's too many about a particular thing. It's just like, it's an interesting pattern. That's, that's, that's all. I think it's, it goes a bit beyond a conspiracy theory. That feels a bit weird to say, again, especially with how um, South Park have been covering it. I just feel like it's funny at this point. More, you have to mention ESG to YMS. It's literally an investment structure to demonize and feminize men. It's not a conspiracy. So elitist, laugh my ass off. I don't know a lot about ESG, but it, is it supposed to be that it's um, a scoring system I, that can get you more funding, I believe? It's the really thing that know. when I hear it, I'm like, oh, this video is probably really bad. Um, and I shouldn't bother watching it. Well, That's what I, I've like noticed. I said, I don't know enough about it, but as far as I'm aware, it's something that can get you your, your piece of media more. So like the more diversity and inclusion it has, the more points it'll get, and the more points it'll get with ESG, the more funding it can get in the future. I think that's how it works. I don't know, though. I haven't looked into it enough. And obviously, you could satisfy that in theory and also have a great story, so it's not too relevant to us, necessarily. Um, but, I mean, I'd be, you know, if, for example, a piece of media, we, we found out that something was not there in the original draft but forced in there as a result of something like that, it would be interesting to uh, read about in terms of, like, motives and stuff. You know, for example, like, why wasn't Doctor Strange in the end of WandaVision? It's interesting to find out how these things happen. Mm -hmm. Um... You still try and judge it for what it is, though. Why is it a conspiracy theory when Hollywood spokespersons have outright said they are doing it? Are you gaslighting us, or have you just not seen the interviews of these people? He admitted he didn't. He didn't know about a lot of this, uh, which oh. is fine. He doesn't care about mainstream stuff, but um, it is awkward to say that it's incorrect, and then say, "Well, to be fair, I don't know anything about it." 
Yeah. Like, okay. It's okay to not have like really strong opinions on something yeah. if you don't know anything about it. You can just say like I've heard this or that or I don't know or I'd have to wait and see or it's just not my area. It's okay. It's all right. Uh YMS not uh, may not be able to see it but Drinker talks about the woke mainly because it's everywhere. It's called pattern recognition. YMS can't understand basic logic. I mean, he started to seem to concede when we gave him examples in terms of if you're talking about like um Examples of like male characters being assassinated, but to be fair, it's almost everybody's being assassinated because of how shit the writing's gone. But like yeah. specifically rewriting histories and stuff, which gets really, really weird. I mean, if you take the uh, the the what's her face from Indiana Jones, like the the writers don't think that they created a terrible, horrific, <laughs> insanely <laughs> no, annoying think, character. That, and that's, they that's think another that's the Indiana Jones replacement. <laughs> That's another great That's example where someone will be like, I saw that movie. She didn't replace him. It's like, oh, you, you don't know about the context. Oh, yeah, oh, Kathleen it didn't Kennedy. sell enough tickets. That's it. It just didn't yeah, sell like enough she, tickets. If it had, it, she'd be taking over. But like, you don't yeah. know that. You don't know about the interviews. You don't know about the quotes of the people who make these things. And you'd likely have a different opinion if you did. That's all. And you know, you can't blame Drinker for not providing all receipts and links every time he talks about something in a broad sense. Nobody's going to be doing that. But unfortunately, it creates, like, the divide further and further between understanding each other. I'm a bit behind, but YMS was talking about Drinker being aimed at normies rather than Drinker's views on movies, which is kind of true. So saying YMS is talking about Drinker's views is wrong. Well, we got to ask him directly, so... I mean, we got to figure it out. Who is this friend Adam is talking about? He sounds pretty chill, actually. Oh, you mean the, mm. the conspiracy theory friend? Yeah. Hi, Rags. Hello. Have you guys seen Tonal's new video? It hits close to home. What games do you recommend to play when dealing with grief? When dealing with grief? Mm. Well, I don't know. I haven't really had to deal with grief. I don't think I could really make any recommendations. Um, I don't have a go-to game for grief. Uh, yeah, I've not played a game because I've been in grief. So it's not really my wheelhouse. I, would, I could only guess, and that guess would probably be a game that's very in-depth and attention-heavy. Because if you want to deal with grief, you probably want a little bit of escapism for a bit, or you want to forget about something that's on your mind or not have to focus on the grief. So I would either recommend a game that's very attention uh, intensive or something that you're playing, like a fun game that you can play with your friends that requires a lot of um, communication and teamwork. So there aren't like lulls in conversation or silence that you're constantly talking with them and that might. You know, keep your mind off of, uh, off of it and remind you that you do have friends who want to have fun with you and spend time with you. But that's what I would suggest. Again, it's a guess, but hopefully that's, uh, that's decent advice. If I'm uh, feeling particularly down, probably an autopilot game while talking to friends is going to be what I'm aiming for, especially in particular of grief. But then if, the, you know, I'd probably I'd be resorting to films slash TV shows before games because then I can... Uh... Try and introspect, try and figure out what, uh, how to get further on from what maybe had happened, whatever it may be. Um, I know it sounds a little cliche, maybe, I don't know, but I really feel like Lord of the Rings might be a bit of a perfect one for sort of getting back on the horse of life in a way. There's a lot in that series of films that are very um, warm and sort of comforting, and then uh, there's, there's, there's hardship in it that's overcome quite a bit, and it can be quite inspiring. That might be something, but... Hard to say. It's going to be different for everybody, I imagine. I don't know if there's anything you want to say on that, Fringy. I don't really... I've never really thought about that. Um, so I don't, I don't have... Nothing Nothing springs to mind at the moment. Like, I, I'm really not sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Um, so, Drinker breaks down and provides evidence of writing tropes pertaining to how men are written negatively nowadays, but those are just conspiracies despite evidence that proves they are not. Again, YMS conceded he wasn't familiar with the examples. He says, like, um, it's a very Star Wars-centric view. And then we mentioned other things that he hadn't seen. He was like, oh, shit, okay, fair enough. But it's funny to say, that, you know, because the Star Wars, how many examples would there even be from Star Wars? It's like fucking eight or something? I mean, uh, it's, it's weird to not see it anymore. This is, I guess I'm just getting it. It's absurd. The only new, like, Disney Star Wars content that is free of this shit is basically Andor. Because Pretty they're much. all all the characters yeah. in that are just characters. There's no tearing down in favor of raising up. Some... It's so funny how that works. Like it's all a that... weird trend because uh, it doesn't it doesn't seem to work. It's not like you can just 
essentially try to like rip all of the traits of the legacy character and just give them to the new character like that, that doesn't work <laughs> at least it doesn't seem to work very effectively yeah uh the the crazy thing is i think it's probably reasonable to assume there's more people in the world who care about mon mothma right now than ray um probably if we remove People She's caring about Ray as connected to the franchise, like as an icon oh, of yeah. modern Star Wars. People think about like, oh man, Ray's plight in the sequel trilogy. It was just so captivating, and she's yeah. really an inspiring figure. Like, how many people think about that? Versus like Mon Mothma being yeah, well, and of, of course the old example, Luke. You know that that endures yeah. right, regardless of what happened with TLJ as a as a character that people like and respect. Oh, and, no, Boba yeah. Fett. Wait, what? Luke, uh, Skinwalker Luke in the Boba Fett oh, show. That was, uh, no, that was Mando and Boba Fett twice, remember? I guess yeah, you're Mando right. was first up. Go off at the end and destroy all the robots, and then there was him hanging out on um, less The Boba Fett one is what comes Fett. to mind, because of the whole the baby Grogu thing and him training I the think, um, and the, the I think the, thing. I think of the Mando one because the effect is worse. Like, if it was, if it was particularly Skinwalkery yeah, in that one. It's pretty bad in that one. <laughs> uh, what else could I have done? YMS, could you not have used the sphere you're somewhat in to just talk with Critical Drinker? It's not impossible. Um, yeah, that was definitely suggested. And the, you know, what could I have done in regards to? Because people are talking about we're at the point of um that story of the my crazy friend who watches Drinker. It's just like you could have just not opened with that. You didn't need to open. Yeah, with that. Um, it's like that was, uh, obviously uh, that's not something you talk about if you're. Like, like, you're obviously coloring people's expectations and poisoning the well by that. Obviously. Fucking obviously. Um, so, the next one yeah, says, poisoning the well. Disingenuous at best. Um, I think you can accidentally poison the well. I guess. Uh, I think you can... Uh, yeah, 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 I think so. Um, I don't know that you necessarily need to... Yeah. You can, you can also intentionally do it... Maybe this is this is a different word for this, but intentionally do it in a moral sense, as in we're going into talking about movie Bob, and then someone's like, "Why are you guys so aggressively unfair to him?" Immediately, we'd be like, "Oh, okay, like <laughs> maybe, maybe like, you don't do know." We want to fast yeah. track the character development of that one. <laughs> yeah, and someone could be like, "Aren't you poisoning the well?" Because now you're setting them against whatever he has to say right now, and it'd be like the pattern is so incredibly strong that like it, it would be fucking wild if he did say something. Uh, normal but at the same time i probably would be like i am going to take everything he says in a in, you know in a fair manner whatever it is in this video we do try to agree with him just like everyone else where we think they're making good points it's just that movie bob is movie bob he blocked me uh semi recently by the way because um oh. there was there was someone on twitter who said to him that disney is obviously bleeding hard and that they've suffered greatly in the last like year or two for you know their creative output in all kinds of ways and movie bob said uh, hopefully you person who said that will evolve one day into a creature that deserves to breathe which Jeez. was interesting I mean, the mouse certainly <laughs> like, appreciates that because i know it's right clear that disney is obviously having some financial issues you'd have to be insane not to not to say that it, it, I, it, obviously they like, are i mean this year it fascinates me to no end that the centennial of Disney has been this bad um, that it's like basically all of their uh, all of the the trends that they've been successfully using for the past five or six years to make a lot of money not working anymore. Marvel movies aren't working anymore. Just doing Disney remakes isn't working anymore. Like animation struggling, which that one's a little bit more like, uh, damn, that kind of sucks. But like, it's, anyway. it's, it's 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 incredible, isn't it? It's like insane. Um, I. I highlighted that interaction. There's a guy says that Disney's had a bad year. The movie Bob said you don't deserve to breathe, which is such what? a like. Yeah, that's the what summary. The... God, he's so crazy. Um, he saw that, and then he said on a tweet like, "No wonder I've gotten an increase in harassment. It's uh, it's this thing." He's referring to me, by the way. And he said, "I didn't know this thing was still around or th uh, like." Like, I think he said, uh, oh, it's still around, or it's still following me. Oh, so me. he's referring to you with dehumanizing labels, okay. Yes, that's... it and that, which is... I, he's I, like... such a... <laughs> what is he... I, I just, like... Okay, if you feel like you're the... 
<laughs> I just... And he said that, like, <laughs> you know, this this thing has just been trying to send all kinds of, like, hateful harassment at me all the time when all I've ever done, if anything, to these fuckers is, like, try to improve them, try to tell, tell them to be better. Okay. I believe that's I like how phrase it. I like how he imagines you as, like, a little hobgoblin. Yeah. <laughs> just lurking around in the, in the shadows going, yeah, <laughs> I just... Flinging shit at him. Of course. I don't think I don't think Movie Bob is allowed to misgender you though. Um, I mean, it's kind of weird. Well, because it, it's the one that I I think is kind of the worst out of all of them. When you call someone it, it's like, what are you trying to do? Like, actually, be honest I mean, with yourself. What are you trying to do? I mean, using using words like it to describe a human being. Um, yeah, it's pretty like, obvious what you're up to. Um, the word it is typically used to describe inanimate objects and animals. Or monsters. Yeah, I'm not People. gonna call you an it. Yeah. I just don't- I'm not no. calling you an it. You're a human fucking being. Even Movie Bob is deserving of being called he and not it. It's, um... Yeah, He's really the way big, you though. describe you me is, um, uh, this is still a thing of its own, in regards to me, as a person. A thing of its own. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I just- what is- <laughs> So crazy. He's yeah, and he, and he said, uh, "These guys live. Uh, I live rent free in these things' heads, and all I ever did to, in quotations, them was tell them to be better." That's yeah. That's movie Bob. Movie Bob is the pinnacle of self improvement. It's just he's like, like he's basically like uh, he's um, Mr. Rogers, essentially. He left out the part where he t he wanted just like seventy percent of the population dead. I feel like that. That's. And not to mention the quote that you'd mentioned earlier about him uh, basically saying that person doesn't des can't shouldn't be able to breathe because, because they said Disney have lost money. <laughs> the mouse didn't have a good year. Like, fucking hell! Like, there's a reason why he is the face of the consumer meme. Yeah. Oh, it was nuts. Um. Anyway. I had a tooth pulled three days ago. The roots were broken and shattered. The doctor couldn't numb it well enough. I'm in greater pain now than during before or after that surgery. Ouch. Man, they were yeah, not that, enjoying that, that either. Though that, that surgery sounds real bad. Uh, hopefully you're feeling better. Because there's a reason why uh, people say pulling, like, compare pain of any kind to pulling teeth. It's pulling some of the worst teeth. pain. Yeah. I've had teeth pulled, but it wasn't bad at all um but they i've had a tooth it, pulled like, i wouldn't area, so. yeah i wouldn't have said it was it was not even the pain it's discomfort um, um well of course the fact that you've got anesthetic is real swell because i got oh yeah i got two teeth pulled and i didn't even but the afterward was pretty uncomfortable i gotta say yeah yeah <laughs> the afterward was not fun uh, drink is the biggest, safest, non-woke reviewer. Same way anti-white racists feel safe making Black Panther their thing. Just because racists like Black Panther doesn't mean Black Panther is anti-white pipeline. Um, you saying that Drinker has a huge appeal, and that shouldn't be assumed then that a, um, a fraction of the audience shouldn't be assumed to be his whole thing. Because I guess I, mean, I agree. If that's what you're biggest saying. Biggest movie reviewers on. Uh, on I think YouTube. he's the biggest. I am. Um, I don't yeah. say that to fluff him up or anything. I think he is the most. No, he might be. Like he engaged be. with film yeah. reviewer now. I think he beats out Jeremy Johns and Chris Stuckman. And at that point, who is his competition? Red Letter Media, but it's like no, Who's he's he? being no, because no, I mean Red Letter Media doesn't have a million subs, right? They're below that. It's not. Well, I don't care about sub counts. It's engagement. Like views, yeah. Engagement. Oh, sure, but I mean, like drinkers' videos get <laughs> yeah, lots of views. That's what I mean. I don't know yeah. that anyone's being drinker right now, which is, you know, fucking congratulations to him, because that's not an easy thing to do. Uh, not that's it, I'm swan diving off my ski lift, and it's all YMS's fault for being such a soy jack. Oh my god. Are you watching this on a ski lift? That's Unconventional, interesting. but interesting, yeah. Have fun, though. Skiing is a lot of fun. Uh, it's called poisoning the well. It's a dirty tactic. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not good, but if you can, uh, like I said, there's certain circumstances I think where it would be made more clear as to why you might do it, but, uh... Yeah, but, but of course, in this case, where it's like, I have a guy who's crazy, and he doesn't watch any movie reviewers but Drinker, like, I mean... Or he couldn't name any of them but Drinker, which is like, yeah, okay. Yeah, like, I mean, there is obviously a perception that you were meant to form based on Remember. that information. Synthetic Man said that the biggest problem with Drinker's work is that he doesn't label the actual people <laughs> behind all of this that are the problem. It's like, from that you'd conclude like, oh, so Drinker, oh, and he's like, no, that's just, he's crazy. <laughs> like, the fucker is crazy. Why would you? <laughs> that would be poisoning the well, too. 
Why don't we talk about? Oh, you know, Jesus watches Critical Drinker. That that great guy over there who does nothing but nice things. It's like, oh, look at oh, that. He goodness. likes Drinker. Oh no. Now what? Uh, we can be done with this in ten minutes by having Adam admit he doesn't like right wingers. That's all this is. I I think he was making more substantive points than that. It's, it goes beyond right wing, left wing, but you know, everyone's gonna have a bias. I wouldn't disagree necessarily that it's gonna bleed in. Um, best thing you can do is find it, highlight it, and work. I was about to say work against it, work with it, I suppose, when you have a bias. You want to work alongside it, understand uh, it. Well, yeah, because, I mean, I don't even know what it means to eliminate biases from your uh, from your consciousness. Yeah, um, I mean, so, it, yeah, I guess. you always just try and find it and then understand it. That's, like, the main thing. Understand it and try to not have it completely, like, essentially try to have it not make you unreasonable. I think that's the, that's the main thing. That, uh, was two, that was double negatives. I'm confused. Have it, have it make you, <laughs> don't be unreasonable, all right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Bringing up two unrelated stuff, things next to each other connects those items for the audience. Even if you say it uh, isn't necessarily related, it's always a bad thing to do if you try to be neutral. There's no benefit whatsoever to what he brought up as information. To the, it, uh, it wasn't even relevant. Yeah, the, uh, it's just not. It wasn't even relevant at all. So. But it does have drawbacks, which is that the audience mm -hmm. are now poised to think that Drinker appeals to crazy people. Conspiracy mm -hmm. brain right wingers. After all, the conspiracy brain person, the only reviewer that he's interested in is Drinker, so. You and know, then, of course, he, he had very uh, specific and harsh things to say about Russell Brand, and then he connected the why would Drinker be on there. Unless, of course, there was a crossover, and then he said he would go on there, which completely fucked that all. Mm. Yeah, that was point uh, up. that was pretty baffling. Conspiracy brained. Adam is corporate brained. Oh, that's, a, that's kind of a comeback. I guess. Uh, okay. Sure. Uh -huh. yeah. something to that. I tend to lean toward the beliefs of Adam's conspiracy person, and I subscribe to Adam. His argument here fits literally his own channel. Exactly. I mean, we don't need to do it, but. If I was to just start watching a new video from Flumpleton and I just go, Hey, guys, did you know I actually have a friend who's insane and eats children and he really loves this channel? Oh my goodness. I feel like you two would be like, why did you say that? <laughs> like, oh, what, are you trying to like, link the two together for some what the reason? Fuck does that, why do you know someone who eats children? <laughs> what, is he in jail? I'd just be like, oh yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just putting it out there. It's just an interesting little thing I do. All my watch this guy. Yeah. Like, cancelling PewDiePie because a random shooter made PewDiePie references, it's ludicrous to pull this when no one else gets held to this standard. And that's, that's, that sucks about the PewDiePie one, because you know, it's, it's like, once that's done, it's just like, well, there it is. And now everyone's gonna make that point. And say, like, ah, it's connected. And it's like, that's a fucking insane. I've seen enough PewDiePie videos to know that it, the idea that you'd inspire a shooter is absolutely nuts. But uh, it, can, it can destroy someone's career if a shooter decides to just throw a reference in like that. Um, can someone please, oh, of course, and then the, the tragedy on top of everything, I mean, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember if you made videos about it, but, like, the idea that you would ever be implicated as a part of the inspiration for someone who did something that fucking horrific. You know, everyone is fighting over whether or not the influence is, like, a valid connection, when one of the things that should be considered is, the, imagine the emotional weight that gives you, finding out someone did that, uh, and what the fuck you're supposed to do next, sort of thing. Can someone please tell me who the whiny numpty is? Well, I mean, out of the four of us, I think you should probably be able to figure out our names, so I don't know who you're referring to exactly. But it was, uh, it was Fringy, myself, Rags, and YMS who were there, so hopefully that clears it up. Never liked YMS, he always comes off as so phony. Um, I don't know, I, I, I've gotten an impression that he was always uh, honest to the point of brutal. He would happily take mm. a position he thinks is unpopular. He's had plenty of uh, controversies. I mean, some of them were brought up. He thinks Indiana Jones is, what was it, a four? <laughs> it's like, damn. Indiana Jones is very, very, very small. His audience were fucking upset with him for that one, as we've had I mean, in the past. Most people would be upset about that's crazy. He got that's in loads of trouble opinion. Um, for his takes on uh, A Quiet Place. I remember that happening. He, uh, he had oh, to make a follow-up video like addressing certain criticisms and trying to calm everyone down because everyone fucking adored that movie and he thought it was terrible. And by the way, I think mm -hmm. it is terrible, writing-wise. Um, but that, you know, it's for another day, I guess. Point being is, um, I, don't, I don't think he's, like, pandering or, um, you know, says things uh, to lie deliberately. He says what he thinks, as far as I'm concerned. What's that, laddie? YMS poisoned the well? Keep dodging the arguments like Neo dodging bullets. 
Well, I mean, we spent way longer on that than I would have liked to. I thought it was very agreeable. Um, and I was happily ready to consider that it was, like, not meant that way, you know? Which I'm, I, I'm sure it wasn't. It's just that for some reason it wouldn't be conceded that it could possibly poison the well. Because it's uh, an anecdote. He kept saying that, which I, I don't... I don't know, see how that changes anything. Mm. It's almost like you should research a person before calling them a conspiracy theory shill. Be under the impression based on the titles. Fuck this. Um, I don't think you should have to research a person before just uh, reviewing a video with them in, but maybe you should keep speculation down if you don't know anything about them. Well, it yeah, seems unnecessary. You don't want to have it be so totally laden with, uh, you know, speculation that may or may not be correct. Yeah. Based on a very limited amount of information, it doesn't benefit you. If Adam judges Drinker's work by the title of a series, then he can't object to anyone saying he thinks all movies suck because of his channel name. Yep. Yeah. That was another yeah. huge knock to the whole point. Doesn't make any sense at all. That's it. I'm colifying... Colify... Cule thing? Hmm. I'll read the sentence, see if we can figure out that word at the end. I'm culfing more crosses for the, or cutting maybe, four people in chat who keep saying, I agree with Adam. Plenty of people agree with Adam. His whole audience, I think, uh, <laughs> agreed with him on this one. I would have loved to have seen YMS and Drinker discuss film together, but YMS seems too stuck on politics. I think it ruined what could have been a great film discussion between film, two film tubers. I think the, the bridge between those two could have been wonderful, but oh well. Uh, YMS sounds like an elitist snob who then hems and haws when asked to make a sensible point absolutely insufferable. Very uh, positive opinions in chat today. Slash messages. <laughs> Laugh my ass off. Mm. Does the diet involve evol include evolving as a critic? Uh, <laughs> what do you want me to say about the whole media diet thing? I don't know. Um, yeah. What can I say? Why best? Toxic positivity. Only talk about the good things. Don't point out the bad things in the big blockbusters. Talk about what I want. He'll talk about what well, he thinks is really, bad, yeah. but he often like, lacks context for why the thing might be bad. And sometimes well, I, I don't even think he's fucking yeah. watching the thing, to be honest with you. I, I guess it was, um, because it was kind of an interesting thing in that conversation was just, um... It seemed like he wasn't super familiar with a lot of what was, you know, the contents of a lot of mainstream films. Um, like just unfamiliar with the with the stories, which is fine. Um, it's just that that's relevant, right? When talking about uh, the subject, right? <laughs> of like of, of trends in mainstream films, it's not um, the same thing for a lot of reasons. But maybe it'll be understood if I said like you know the three of us were asked to really consider and understand the context of a particular way a character in My Little Pony was assassinated, and we needed to look at several episodes and then look at the new one, and we would just be like, I don't care. I just, just don't give a fuck at all. Okay. And that's, yeah. you have to understand, that's his POV on, like, a lot of mainstream stuff. And so but then, the thing is, well, we don't you, talk about My Little Pony. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. It's just, just abstain from the, from the topic. Which is the problem. He doesn't abstain. He has lots of opinions about mainstream stuff, but he doesn't really watch it. So it's this big old contradiction, kind of. Indie movies are less accessible because of AAA movies shitting them out. That's not on Drinker, he's the one telling people to boycott the AAA so that more indies get made. Ludicrous. He also advocates for plenty of indie films, so... Yeah. It's, uh... I mean, he, he, well, well, it's even conceded of... he was wrong on that, like he didn't realize what Drinker well, had done. Mean, yes, because, I, I mean, it, you know, like, there's a lot of, like, bigger YouTubers who will only talk about, like, superhero films. Drinker doesn't only talk about superhero films. Hold up. There's multiple live streams where Drinker stated he wants more indie films to be made. So YMS and Drinker agree on this? Drinker is m trying to make it's, his own it's, indie it's film. He's making a film. I don't even <laughs> like, know. Like, I can't entertain uh, stuff yeah. like this. just to throw you off the scent. <laughs> he's trying to trick you. <laughs> Uh, games have a distribution infrastructure that makes it easy for independent developers to release it to the public. How can an independent filmmaker release their work? What distribution channels do they have? Well, you could say YouTube and stuff like um, that, but... Well, I guess it would be that, uh, like, video games, digital storefronts versus there are only so many screens in a theater, right? Like, the, the, there's competition yeah. for screen means that it limits you in a way that is different from video games, because with video games, it is a thing that you play at home. Right, you just get it for your console or your PC, and you play it at home. Uh, and you know, I guess the same with books as well. Well, I guess you could make this with books, right? Of like getting into you know book bookstores, but you know, like with digital, right, as being such a huge part of that industry as well. 
compared to yeah with indie films it's like if you can get onto a screen great but good luck and alternatively it'll be like online um video on demand i guess if you wanted to put it on youtube for free but you're probably not going to make your money back that way um uvc said during ethan debate that he often goes one to two days without sleeping this his odd temperament and low intelligence and my experience with the addicts i'm calling it now he's on meth um i don't know oh. if there's confirmation that he's on any kind of particular drug but that um he's definitely got like a hyperactiveness to him that makes you wonder and uh going man i can't go two days without sleep i'll be dead <laughs> not actually yeah, dead, but yeah, mostly. Yeah, I mean, doing all nighters, you know, all nighters to get work done. I'm already like, like time, you know, completely destroyed the at the end of our anniversaries. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's I don't know. It's when when the sun the sun starts to rise. It's like my god, something is wrong, and my body knows. This. Yeah. Uh, why should I have to fly myself to Maple Syrup Land to find a halfway decent movie? This criticism of having poor media diet seems really unreasonable. Um. It's not even... You wouldn't need film festivals to solve that if it were a problem. But it wasn't... It was dropped anyway because Drinker does recommend things that aren't mainstream. And he mm. watches things that aren't mainstream. And there's plenty of ways to watch these things without going to film festivals. I don't even think... I think that's a non sequitur, to be honest with you. Like, improving your film diet, if, if one was to take that seriously as, like, a criticism. You don't need film... Like, film festivals could not exist well, I mean, and you can it, still it improve was... your film diet. It would feel as analogous as saying somebody needs to improve their video game diet by going to, like, PAX. <laughs> just like, you know no, I mean? yeah, I don't need to like, do that. No, you could just boot up Steam and see what games are around that interest you that are of different genres, some, you know? Yeah, just ask your friends. What good games have you been playing? Yep. It's a disconnect uh, that's just a reality that happens for some people. Like, he's so familiar with going to them and understands them as so much fun and, uh, you know, invigorating as a film fan that he doesn't understand why a film fan wouldn't be doing it. Meanwhile, there's the vast majority of film fans aren't going to film festivals. And when no. I say film fans, I mean, you know, including er anybody who's like, I love watching films and I make time for films in my life. All yeah, those like people, not, vast majority not are not going movie. to film festivals, nor do they feel tempted to. And if they were to go, they would then be like, all righty, I'm going to check out, as YMS suggested, go by the directors and writers that you want to see the work from, in which they would recognize just about zero of them. Man, I, d I don't know, like, that, that to me is so fascinating because I just, I feel like this is true. The average person, like, the average person would struggle to name 10 movie directors, and I think that they would struggle to name even one screenwriter. Um, man, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like I just... I, I, uh, well, if you pulled yeah. up a, a current... Like, the recent TIFF uh, festival sort of thing... I know festival's in that name, but um, if you pulled up TIFF and you asked... Or if you labeled all of the recent uh, films that were played and you labeled all the directors in a row, I wonder, between the three of us, how many we'd be able to recognize... Mm. And that's just and a we, reality. We, we, we pay a lot of attention to movies. You know? Yeah, and you could be like, "Well, mainstream." It's like we watch so many movies. You don't even know. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, there's, there's plenty of movies. Plenty of movies. We do just, EFAP yeah. coverage of movies. We do the recordings. Then we watch ones for like you know prep for something we're covering, and then we just watch ones for fun. Then we watch ones to fill in blanks in our library, so to speak. I think it's. I, I think it's just if you look at a variety. You know, authors, people know the names of authors. It's like why it's like they're the sole, you know, creative force. Well, not the sole creative force, right? You got editors and things like that. But, but like they're like the lead uh, creative voice, their names on the front of the cover. So people know the names of like Stephen King or Michael Connolly. And, these, um, and, then, and then by comparison in films, people certainly recognize actors. Like people could name a shit ton of actors because they're like the people that you see even though there's a shit ton of people who are working in roles that you don't see that are incredibly instrumental to um, the creative process of that film. And I think it reflects in the fact that people just don't really know the names of directors or writers. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, in video games, right, people know studios. Very few people know the names of individual developers um, or oh, creative yeah. directors or anything like that. You know, people know Naughty Dog or Bungie or, uh, or like, Infinity Kojima. Ward. Or, well, he's, like, the... Uh, he's. But that's because maybe name, the only one on that people box, could name. You know, like his name yeah. gets put on the box as part of the reason why people know. But then, like, if you pushed people, even people who play a shit ton of video games, I'd be surprised to see how many of them could name uh, directors, uh, game directors. But like, that doesn't—that's not necessarily reflective of like a disinterest in the art itself. Um, 
It's just, you know, it's what's the thing that you see first? What's the most visible element of it? Uh, Roger Ebert wants the title to his book back, and they're referring to the one that's called I Hated, Hated, Hated This Movie. Oh, right. I hated, hated, hated this movie. Yeah. Oh, what was it, Friday the 13th? Oh, I don't was know. That the, where he, I thought, was that the review where he said that? I think it was Friday the 13th. I wouldn't be surprised. It was one surprised. of those slasher movies, I think. I think it was Friday the 13th. I hated, hated, hated this movie. Uh, whole argument boiled down to, but my art films. It's more complicated than that, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, why am I sincerely from someone that enjoys your stuff? Next time you decide to make a video criticizing another channel, do more research beyond the surface level of their content. Only on the condition that you want to speculate on the things that can be found out. As in, like, yeah. when we go at a lot of the channels that we cover on EFAB, we don't speculate beyond what they give us in that video. At least typically. Uh, unless it's some kind of funny information we know, like with in the case of Movie Bob. Why am I want you to watch what I want you to watch. To be fair... You could argue that is kind of the case for everybody, and that's not exactly a bad thing. Like What, the people want to recommend the things that they think are great and are worthy Yeah, what, of what we believe yeah. to be the best media we want more recognition and praise for, because then we believe it'll have a ripple effect of making more of it, potentially, and that stuff being appreciated. Obviously, the three of us at this point are going to be like lifelong advocates, where possible, of Soma, as just one example. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like yeah. you guys just want us to enjoy what you enjoyed. It's like, I mean, yeah. to an extent, uh, yeah. I mean, that'd Correct. be, yeah, that'd be real much, right, yeah. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> you, should, you should share my opinions on things, yes. Patrick Willems, you're watching movies wrong, YMS. You're watching the wrong movies. Um, I think he'd probably agree with that. <laughs> like... The, the, the statement, yeah. he'd probably consider it defensible. And to an yeah, extent, I think, so. I think I would argue it with some stuff. If you're gonna be, for example, I'm gonna watch Ahsoka because I know it'll be well-written and super exciting, I'd be like, wow. Okay. I feel like there's better things to choose if you're actually gunning for, like, great storytelling. But I guess you really like your Star War, so fair enough. Star War. For every Minecraft, there are a hundred plus Life of Black Tigers. Likewise, there are hundreds of MOM quality movies for every Train to Busan. Indie movies slash games offer a better variety, but I wouldn't say better quality is guaranteed. True. I agree with all that. Uh, the indie sector is going to have all kinds of crazy things. It'll also have loads of shit. Because why wouldn't it? Kind of just, you know, when when the, the when it's it's uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Ex I don't know if it's accessibility, it's just like barrier to entry, right? When the barrier to entry is lower, like, what what does that entail? It, it doesn't, like, it means that some, some great things that couldn't get through, that couldn't breach, are able to exist and thrive, but then there's plenty of stuff that it's just crap, you know? Uh, Muller and crew woke me up to modern Hollywood. Without their criticism, I could still be a consumer. We well, can't uh, have that. Can't have you being a consumer now. Yeah, if you if you're talking about like just just watching shit without thinking about it, I mean there is uh, there is an ignorance is bliss sort of aspect, I guess. Because, but the thing is, I don't think anybody would opt for that once they're um, suitably out of the matrix. If you know what I mean, like if you if you could flip a switch and you're like guaranteed to now enjoy all of media going forward, would you not feel like not flipping that? What do you guys think? Yeah, I just I don't like it. Like, are you well, happy? If you would have asked me ten years ago, you know, if I thought you know more movies were good, then I I must certainly say yes. Now I think that not <laughs> few movies are good, but you know, I still prefer to think this way. Yeah, I I feel like over the years, just refining standards is is what we've been doing to an extent. It's uh, important to keep taking everything as an example and figuring out what we value about storytelling. As opposed to just whether or not it makes you feel good. But in a, in a sense, whatever makes you feel good, you try and figure out why it's making you feel good. And I find that process yeah. much more rewarding than, yeah, I like everything mostly. Like, oh, okay. Uh, if we didn't fight, the studios wouldn't have Citizen Kane, The Godfather, 2001, Star Wars, Jaws, the list goes on and on. Um, when you say if we didn't fight, do you just mean like if creatives weren't, like encouraged and sort of incentivized to fight to create stuff like that because yeah you definitely don't th th oh, this... oh, oh i get you like the idea that the films would have a harder time of existing if there wasn't like advocacy for them 
Yeah, I mean, you know, because if, if someone, for happen. example, if Ahsoka did do better than all the other shows, it was, like, amazing, and they're like, oh, we just got greenlit for season two and three, we'd be like, oh, shit. Was that something that happened in the conversation? Sort of the question of how much of an impact any of these types of conversations can have? I can't um, remember. Was that, was that something that happened in that conversation that we talked about the notion of like impact and potential to influence like anything in the film industry? I think we've had that conversation. I don't know if it was on that stream or not, but obviously we always I say that like well, it's, it's higher I, than yeah. zero. We know that. Well, I, I mean, I certainly don't think that this is pointless. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> that's what I would say. I don't think it's pointless. Howdy, EFAP crew and chat. Been lurking since Jared. Thanks for all the great content over the years. Y'all helped me to get through a 32-credit blitz to finish up my bachelor's this semester. Where should I send fan art slash anime? Um, um, Discord is probably going to be the best I, place for me to find it. Um, yeah, Discord's probably the way to go. The Reddit is another probably good place. I might see it. And then Twitter is a place that's un, like lower likely that I'll see it, but I might still see it there. Um... To try email also, as well. congrats on uh, finishing up your uh, degree. Yeah. Absolutely. Good, Good work. Good job. The Pokemon of the day is... All right, we'll do that last, okay? Just so that we can <laughs> okay. we'll collect up. If there's several of them, okay? <laughs> we'll figure sure. it out. Uh, hi, Rags. Hello to you. YMS is so weak, he needs his chat to come save him. All right, come on. Everybody has the chat that's in favor of them. That's normal. You guys are in favor of us. I assume <laughs> someone might assume like, yeah, you, 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 like, you don't, st like, you don't. There's, there's conversations about whether or not we should police uh, EFAP more or less, and it's like I don't police them when they're fucking cruel as hell to us. So you know what I mean? Yeah, like, right. Yeah. How many times we get to fights with EFAP chat? That was something that um, Adam was talking to me about on Adam and Sitch that I should, um, should I not quell anger, angry sentiments toward any particular guest? And I was like. I don't like the way that goes, like the way that's heading. It's like, where, where, are we, where are we drawing the line exactly? Should people, shouldn't people be able to be like, I fucking hate this guest, or I fucking hate Rags, or Fringy, or Mola? I, I don't see why... I don't see why that would be bannable, or at least why it should be bannable. Um, love the reviews, Adam and EFAP guys, for hosting you. Oh, good. <laughs> that's a nice callback, there you go. Yeah, there you go. I know this will kind of depend on the game, but in general, what are some mechanics you would implement in a game to either remove or discourage save scumming? Uh, mm. I mean, one of the easiest ones is to have a strict autosave system. Yeah. Like, um, that's, that's probably the most direct, straightforward path. Um, I hate to say it, but remove, like, cheap deaths. Uh, as much as you can. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Um... So, for example, <laughs> if, a, if a person does a whole bunch of strategy and sees that the game, they've, they've made too many mistakes throughout the whole thing and they're about to lose and that they, they can see loads of places for improvement, I feel like they're less likely to save scum that. Versus, like, sorry, they spawned on top of you and you died. It's like, I didn't know it was going to fucking happen. And then it's yeah, like, maybe you should save scum then. Kind of <laughs> exactly. Um, um, in uh, RimWorld, before you start a new game, and you could change this option uh, if you want, but um, it you select your difficulty, or you can make a custom difficulty, and it has a bunch of sliders and whatnot. But mm -hmm. one of the options that you check is whether you can reload any time, save and load, you know, however much you want. But you can also toggle on the commitment mode, where you cannot save. The game goes as it goes, and you could leave and come back. You know, you can, you can quit the game and come back, and it'll save. But you can't save yourself, right? You can't make like a save. the The run that you're on is what it is. If something happens, there's no way to undo it. Um, so it it could be something that you can toggle. Um, I mean, it's essentially the hardcore modes in a lot of video games. Is you know, if you die, then it's over, or you have to start over. Or, you know, you could have milder versions of that where you can only, you know, have a certain amount of saves or have very big checkpoints or, you know, things of that nature. And, of course, you know, Baller was right when he said don't have the, don't have, you know, the, those, like, unfair moments in games. Because the more of those you have, the more people will want to try and, uh, you know, circumvent them pretty, pretty understandably. If I was playing a game where I felt like, you know, there was nothing I was you just done. getting... Yeah, if it games like lol, you just die now. There's like, there's no way I'm playing a hardcore mode. There's no way I'm not, you know, doing that kind of thing. 
and of course some of this depends on how you define save scumming, but the idea of using saves to essentially uh, create checkpoints where there shouldn't be, or to sort of circumvent game mechanics, or circumvent um, the game trying to give you like consequences, or having you live with the consequences of the choice you choices you make in games, then I mean it's you know kind of always covered by the suggestions we've made. Yeah. Uh oh, Mailer, I'm glad to see you. I went out for the morning paper and got lost. I hope you're all right. Yeah, I hope you're okay. <laughs> What's going on uh, there? I can imagine that as like a horror story of someone yeah. going out to grab their mail and looking and then seeing you standing, <laughs> staring at them yeah. in the corner. In the shadows. Uh, Rags, do you miss Dirty Bomb? I miss Dirty Bomb. I miss Dirty Bomb a lot. Um, I put just shy of a thousand hours into Dirty Bomb. I love that game. It was a game that I really try-hearted in. That's the game where I had incredible... Um, it was one of the smoothest, most responsive shooters I've ever played. And, um... I mean, they... Uh, I, I kind of hope that someone, like, takes it or makes a successor to it or someone buys it out and, like, does something with it and has a re-release of it because Dirty Bomb was fucking great. I love Dirty Bomb. But I think it's it's kind of like one of those... one of those warning games of if the, the, if the, the combat in the gameplay is ace but everything else surrounding it is pretty much awful... Whether it's the monetization or the you know building loadouts and stuff like that, if, if you fail in those aspects, then you really hurt your ability to kind of survive as a game, uh, which is such a it makes it such a shame because having really good and fun gameplay that's the difficult part, that's the part that's hard to nail down. But they ace that part and they they failed in the elements that got players to you know especially new players to stick around and stay. So, yeah, I really, really miss Dirty Bomb. Uh, sigh. Maybe one day it'll come back. Who knows? Open ball Wednesday, EFAP Friday. Everything I know is wrong. Up is down. Black is white. Left is right. Um, a shilling for your meter sucks. Hi, Rags. Hi. Hope they make it through that waxy, wobbly week. Uh, Drinker versus YMS. I hate when Mummy and Daddy fight. I'll let you guys guess which one is which. Seriously, love both of them, even if I disagree quite often. Yeah, I mean, I've disagreed with both of them on Media Takes. Why with me? I don't agree with YMS, but my dad started watching Drinker, and now he thinks that film is a dead art form, and none of them are worth his time. Sad. Well, I don't know how he got that from Drinker, considering how often Drinker does positive reviews. Yeah, he's got a lot of great praises stuff out there. Obviously, if your dad was saying that, like, Star Wars was dead, or Marvel, I could totally understand that. Because it's true, <laughs> but, you know, not, not like all of film. Russell Brand is pretty openly left-wing, and yet constantly has conservatives on his show, so he definitely has people he disagrees with on. Um, I don't know enough about his stuff, but I hear, like, he's got the thing going on where, like, everyone says, no, he's a fucking left-wing nut, no, he's a right-wing nut, and it's just like, okay. Maybe he's just a nut. I really don't know much about him. Don't know either. Uh, Rewatching update, episode uh, 69. Nice. Star Wars Gill is sleepyhead in that one. I think, yeah, I think the a lot of the gills have sleepy time on EFAP. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's fair enough. I think ER has some sleepy time as well. <laughs> we, <don't laughs> sleep. we talk in <laughs> politics now? Finally, a politics arc. No. No. I love it when EFAP and YMS talk. Love you both. Oh, that's nice. Why doesn't YMS come to EFAP more? Good chemistry. Yeah, sure. Definitely. Up. Hail EFAP, love you guys. Well, thank you. So nice. I expected to agree with YMS coming into this, but man, what a slime ball. He's pretentious, disingenuous, and he's backing away from everything. Garbage. Hmm. That's a scathing review right there. If Drinker cares about art, he shouldn't focus on movie stars, but good actors, I wouldn't compare Cruz's acting abilities to Al Pacino, favoring mid. Also, this is just a matter of figuring out exactly what Drinker meant by movie stars. And as I said, from what I know from having met him and fucking been familiar with the way he uses it a lot in his work, he's referring to individuals that can essentially, with their star power, sell movies to people, which was something that, when I was a kid, was very common. It is not common anymore. In fact, it's not any. It's just not around. 
There was a theory that Tom Cruise was the last one, but that kind of got destroyed with Dead uh, Reckoning. Yeah, yeah. Um, someone could be like, oh, because of one film? It's like, I mean, yeah, that kind of destroys it, doesn't it? Isn't the whole point yep. that if he can sell any movie, then that wouldn't have failed. And to be honest with you, it's kind of weird that he couldn't sell that one when it's Mission Impossible. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like he was trying to sell some action movie called, like, no, Action it's, Man. It's a new series. It's a brand new... It, uh, not a new series, sorry. It's an established series that um that has been incredibly successful. And the last the one that came out was fucking Beloved, so... Yep, Beloved and very successful. Uh, the last EFAP coverages have been fire. Sweet, thank you. We've done all kinds mm -hmm. of wacky things this, uh, recently in terms of different yep. formats, you know? Hopefully y'all have been enjoying it. Also, writing is why movies are failing, not actors. Sure, yeah, I'd agree with that, for the most part. Well, I'd say actors have been... I, I, actors I mean, have been you good? Look at, you look at, like, these Marvel films and TV shows, the problem has not been the actors. Yeah, well, actors, I'm inclined to believe that it's um, a lot of these actors we would consider bad maybe for performances and stuff would be good if they were being directed by someone like Mike Flanagan, for example, or um, whoever else like pushes performances out of people or won't accept like an OK take. Um, I think we, we make that sort of joke every once in a while where someone will deliver a thing and then we'll just be like, you didn't have to use that take, you could have used a different one. But the joke, of course, means like, maybe they didn't have another one, maybe that was it. Maybe they yeah. were like, yep, you did it, that's the line, let's go. Like, oh. Okay, when there are people out there who are making stuff and they have a particular delivery in mind, and they will keep going until you get it. Fucking even George Lucas wanted that, right? Like, it's a meme, but uh, the prequels when he was filming them, the, he was known for saying faster and more intense, like, take again. Which is, you know, you can. I'd prefer that than just nothing. Uh, was the Last of Us show mainstream, or it had to be liked? It was mainstream, and it was, was liked. Absolutely mainstream. Um, that was one of the most successful shows on HBO, and it was good. So yes, <laughs> that was neat. Uh, you know, my mum is like not interested at all in zombie stuff, and I was like, "This is a new, arguably zombie show out that I think you'd probably love." And then she was like, "Why?" And I was like, "Because it's about a a parent and their child, essentially." Which I already like. A lot of parents find that appealing to a lot of reasons. I was like, "You know what? Just watch the first half hour of episode one." And uh, as, when she'd finished that, she was like, "I want the whole thing." And I was like, "Yeah, I figured." <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty strong that opening in both the game and the series. Hey, massives, almost missed this one. Just gonna send a super chat and listen to this later. Play little nightmares and high mubles, frogold and rags. Hello. Hey there. Hello. Just pooping in right now. Going through the backlogs. I'm on EFAP 42. Well, wow. oh, you got luck. a long way to go. Yeah. Uh, Fringy, what are your thoughts on Australia possibly moving toward being a cashless society? Oh, is that something that's happening? <laughs> I have no idea about that. I am pro cash. I like it. Uh yeah. I mean, I like it existing as a thing. <laughs> um, Drinker has a video about Arcane entitled "Woke Done Right" that illustrates that he doesn't actually mind a lot of woke tropes if properly executed. That's the kind of thing that would be interesting to get him to talk further about. If um. If something can be woke and good, then it being woke it wouldn't necessarily matter, would it? And then get him to sort of talk on that. I think you talk about like motivations, influences, effects, and that there's like a crossover of Venn diagram, so to speak, with quality and uh, influence of a gender or whatever. Like I'm not sure. I, I you know I spent a lot of time with him, but I don't know exactly what his answer is going to be for a lot of these things. Soma was mentioned many times on EFAP, so I played it, and my mind was blown. Have you guys discussed it anywhere, or do you plan to? Hi, Rags. Ooh, uh, hello. Boy, you might be in luck. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> maybe, maybe someday, yeah. Well, uh, the I reality think. is that we have discussed it post-Fringy playing it, but instead of recommending that, I would recommend watching Fringy's playthrough, which you can yes, find on Cosmoronic. Uh, no, Cosmoronic, yeah. Um, so if you YouTube... Yeah, Cosmoronic, the Cosmoronic Fringy Soma, you'll find is two parts. You should find it, yeah. You'll be able to check that out. It's a very uh, interesting, gripping playthrough from a gripping game. You might quite enjoy that. And uh, yeah, maybe... I'm, I'm, pretty, yeah, I'm pretty enamored with that game. <laughs> and maybe in the future, we'll do something with Soma, uh, the three of us. Who knows? Who knows? Who can say? Mm -hmm. uh, the difference is Mulan from the 90s was good. I'm not sure what this is a response to, but I agree. 
Uh, YMS seems to be arguing with the most toxic, reductive version of Drinker's fans rather than the Drinker himself. Some people do reject anything with women such melanin, but I've never perceived Drinker doing so. Um, sure. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the, you're going to get crazies. And that's what I mean. Like, it's, it sucks that we're in a culture that does try to sort of paint a side by their crazies. Um, and that we should probably avoid doing that. Kill Bill is not a horror movie with a strong... MFC? Main MFC. female character? Maybe. Oh, right, because uh, YMS said that uh, the, the Terminator and Alien are both sci-fi horrors with uh, like last girl trope leading into their main characters, which I stand by has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Like, how good their writing is doesn't have anything to do with that. If, do you remember he was like yeah. saying like they, they're almost forced to have more interesting characters because of the fact that they are like there's there's like something built for them already that they're gonna have to escape and and overcome like a horrible force or whatever. And I guess this person saying, "Well, Kill Bill isn't a horror movie and it doesn't uh, and it has a strong female character." Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I, I think he would reference. Uh, I think your name was Beatrix Kiddo, right? Main character. Um, as well as a, as a good female character. Kim Wexler of Better Call Saul is a good example. IMO great layered character for the whole show. Can I just, I just want to cut to the chase. Um, I've kind of been blackpilled on this recently. I don't want to hear any more the, 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 like, women needed more good representation or whatever. Um, I think no, there I, was plenty of bright female characters. I, like, um, slipped into it, I think, and I actually want to go into a thing about, like, how this is actually going to cause problems that probably wouldn't have been anticipated. When we had the 90s and 2000s of shit tons of awesome female characters, lots of them doing subversive shit that if released today, people would say is crap. Right, like you know, beating up the main guy in whatever way, or making him look silly, but also being a good character. Like we have plenty of examples of that in in the twenty year span of those two decades. Um, the fact that that's like been sold is not a thing that happened, and that we need to overcompensate for it now to correct the shit and balance it. And instead, we're getting all of these awful female characters. You're gonna start being able to successfully gaslight people into thinking, man. They're right, we didn't have any strong female characters, and now look at them when they are there, and they're awful. Women shouldn't be protagonists, I guess. That's like a, <laughs> that's like a bad place for them in stories. They need to be, uh, like, lower level, they need to be supporting. And it's like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, what a backfire and a fuck-up. And you need to stop. You need to instead go back to those eras and look at all the awesome female characters and start reviewing them positively, and being like, you should check this film out. This is really good. Look at this character. Oh, she's great. Um... You know, we were asked to come up with lists. It was funny, it was, it was a top comment that was like, Mola, why didn't you mention Buffy? And it's like, I always try to avoid mentioning Buffy, because it's so obvious to me. Like, it's, it's like, of course he says Buffy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't say yeah. other stuff, but... Yeah, that would, that would obviously be a huge example. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's mostly cringe to me. Um, I've, I've seen so much of it, it didn't even strike me as an actual problem. That's why when I get told by other people that it is... I'm like, what have you based this on? Why is it just because other people have said it so much at this point that it just sounds agreeable? Remember when you said like, oh, it's easier to name horses than it is female characters? That was insane. Um, yeah, yeah. I because that's know. obviously I, not true. I, it's, it's, course, it gets real awkward when you get like a million answers in chat for a disparate, you know, set of female characters spanning many different mediums, not even just exclusively films, television shows, video games, books. Like, it gets real awkward <laughs> when that happens. I just, uh, like I said at the time, it, it, I feel like there's plenty of stuttering you can have for naming characters personally, or naming any particular thing that you're asked to do on the spot. That's just normal. Uh, on the spot, it happens. It does happen, yeah. Like, it's it's one of the... It's kind of fascinating how that works, because it's not like somebody actually doesn't have the answers. It's But if they sat down and could have their brain go, yep, register that one, yep, clock that one in, yep, put that one in there in the list, then you get, like, the more comprehensive real answers. Um, Medea, what the fuck, Mola? I should have said Medea. That's another fantastic Medea, female character. of course. Uh, Princess Vespa in Spaceballs, or Leia. Like I said, I almost, I'm almost starting to get to a point where I don't want to entertain the conversation anymore. It's annoying me. No, I don't want to entertain yeah. it anymore. Especially rewatching, rewatching a lot of films from the '90s and '80s over the last couple of months. Yeah, I, I, like the overwhelming feeling rewatching all those films is, man, they fucking lied. They lied. Yeah, it, like, they, like I said, what they gaslight themselves, maybe I don't know, but I it's did. like I'm not sure what to make of it. It's just, it was just baffling. It's particularly where I was rewatching Anastasia, where it's just like, dude. 
<laughs> Dude, Anastasia's a really good character. <laughs> well, and That's I rewatched really um, I rewatched Farscape really semi recently, and I forgot yeah. like uh, Aaron Sun mm -hmm. is like one of my favorite characters of all time. I just haven't remembered her as well. Same for Crichton in the in the fucking show. Um, she's fantastic, and her introduction is beating up the main male character. So. Yeah, like it's because it, it's it's funny. Just rewatching a lot of '90s stuff just reminded me. It's like, oh yeah, I remember watching tons of stories where, uh, like the lead female character of the story, or you know, next to the main character, was like assertive and confident, and um, like had a perspective on things. Yeah, they lied to me or themselves. <laughs> um. Starbuck, Clarice Starling, Janeway, Alita, The Bride, Le Femme, Nikita, Leia, Buffy, Ayla from Clan of the Cave Bear, Maggie from Point of No Return, Fiona literally subverts the princess archetype. I can't believe that was pushed back on. Oh, that was crazy. That, that, that was nuts. That was surreal. That was... That was Fiona's actually just, perfect. She's perfect I, as Fiona, an example. I, I just expect better from someone who's made this like their thing, right? Like movie reviews and... Film analysis. And the Leia, too. Leia's just a side character. Like, fuck off. Leia is one of the three main characters of Star Wars. <laughs> like, it's, she is as yeah. integral and essential as Luke and Han. Boring. Uh, thank you for you nailed that one. I think it was it when you were talking about well, Fiona, probably. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, because I can't remember what was the context where we brought Fiona up because she was she was perfect for whatever it was that we were talking about. I mean, what strong, was it? I mean, well written female characters. Uh, yeah, but like, what was the context? Was it? I feel like there was something more specific than that. But I mean, yeah, I think I think she's a really well. It's maybe it was just the fact that like th that's kind of like her whole point as a character, right? Is that um is that she's hyper subversive. Yeah, the whole the Shrek is hyper subversive. The whole yeah, Shrek is a. I mean, the the story where the ogre is the protagonist, Shrek and the good guy is a is a hypothetical come to life. Uh, because if it was released yeah. today, we might get a very contentious series of arguments going because we would like the fuck out of it. I would hope everyone uh, would. Well, yeah, I mean, it's oh god, Shrek is such a great idea, right? Where all of the most unlikely lowliest characters in the fantasy world are the ones who are the most noble, you know, the most yeah. heroic. Shrek and Donkey, like, what a great pairing, an ogre and a donkey rather than Prince Charming and, like, yeah. the magnificent steed. And then, of course, the whole lesson of beauty is within, you know? It's in your soul, it's in your heart. So, it, which is funny, because despite being an incredibly subversive film, like, the core message feels pretty, um, pretty conventional in a certain sense, the idea of, like, inner beauty. Um... And by but, the way, you know. it's funny as fuck. So. Oh yeah, Shrek is hilarious. Comedic like, writing Shrek, is great. Shrek two. Holy shit! Like <laughs> great movies. <laughs> I need to rewatch them. It's been a long time. Oh, we'll do. I want to do EFAP movies for them. Do you remember the? Uh, do you remember the gag in Shrek two where it was cops but medieval and they they got like a yes. pepper? Nice. Yes. Yeah, yes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Do you remember Police when? She's trying to sell Donkey in his introduction. He's like, sell it as though he can't speak. And he gets hit with the yeah. Tinkerbell or whatever. And he's like, he can fly. He's like, hey, I can fly. He can fly. He can fly. Because the talk? guy is, he can talk. He can talk. <laughs> yeah. That's good memes. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Yes, we need to resee that. But we got to yeah, record that shit, okay? Because I think the whole yeah, audience yeah, want to yeah. see us watch I think that. That'd be hilarious. Hey, guys, I'm no, feeling that... Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, do, uh, is Shrek the Third and Shrek Forever After included in the mix? Maybe. I kind of, I think, I want to see them again as well because I have very fleeting. Maybe memories they're okay. Of, like all the, sh they uh, might be okay. Because I remember that everybody Shrek Three is the one that everybody says is the worst, and it's funny because we yeah. can watch it and just be like, you know, it's not great, but it's like... just way worse than Shrek One <laughs> and Two. That's probably the conclusion, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it probably. might be that it's just fine, which is not good if, if you're following Shrek 1 and 2. People have high standards. Oh, yeah. Because you gave them to them. Uh, hey, guys, I'm feeling particularly randy today. Ooh, All right. Wow, randy. Ooh, boy. Well, feeling particularly randy mosh? Could be Maybe. randy random, right? Like you feel, you feel like randy mosh? Yeah. 
Um, Someone I don't know is just Randy to me. This Randy over here. That's another. Yeah. Uh, qualms are moral oppositions, not qualitative ones. Learn to English. Qualms are moral Wait, opposites, sorry. not qualitative ones. Uh, Qualm, okay. an uneasy, an uneasy feeling of doubt, worry, or fear, especially about one's own conduct, a misgiving. Yeah, okay. um, I mean, I feel like that yeah. can be used for both. Yeah, for for moral. I feel like qualm, yeah. qualm is a bit yeah. of a stretchy yeah. word. You can doubt, apply that to a couple things. Yeah, yeah, yeah qualm does feel used like a doubt. Word. I like that as a description. Stretchy word. <laughs> <laughs> mm, stretchy. I like that. I like his, my words stretchy. His point was that you shouldn't have qualms about a movie with this subject matter due to the subject matter alone. Not that you should watch the movie no matter how good it is. Listen to his words. Oh, this is about what Drinker said. Yeah, because so this is the thing. This is about in, when you interpret someone to, for what they say, right? You know when um, Phil Mento said that uh, the aliens are like the Vietnamese or whatever, and we laughed our fucking asses off because that was so insane? If someone Sorry, said, like, if someone said, like, wow, so you're trying to sell to everybody that he thinks Vietnamese people are aliens. It's like, no, I know he doesn't think that. It's the he wrote the script and read it without realizing how awful it sounded. Because yeah, it's he's like... Just Funny. Yeah, it right? And really, just really funny. funny. What are, what's happening there is <laughs> charitability, right? A lot of people could be like, no, Filmento is a monster and he thinks that Vietnamese people are aliens. And it's like, you don't know, you don't need to do that. So when Drinker says he's really surprised people wouldn't be supporting Sound of Freedom, you can go the direction of thinking that Drinker thinks that you should have unequivocal, like, full support for any movie, whether or not it's good or bad quality, if it has a message that's positive. Which he obviously doesn't think. Why would he think that? No one would think that. There's plenty of movies that are absolutely piss awful that probably have a message of friendship is magic. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh yeah, we agree, but obviously I wouldn't say you have to support... It's like, obviously he doesn't have the position. The reasonable interpretation of what he's saying is he's surprised anyone would take issue and, like, stake themselves against something without even having seen it when the fundamental subject matter is that of stopping, isn't it, like, child sex trafficking or something? It's, it's the kind of thing. It's like, why, that's why would what, uh, that film is about? Yeah, yeah. His whole thing is just like he's surprised to see such opposition for something that you'd think there would be full support for, like ending that. And it's just like that's so straightforward. You don't need to like interpret the drinker now believes that you should support stuff unequivocally if it has a message you agree with. And uh, yeah, I don't know that kind of good faith, bad faith stuff. I just it can drive me nuts. And we can fail at it here every once in a while. We try and do good, but like it, it, it can be tough as a human being. I'm just saying it's uh. You know, try and be better, I guess. Falcon style. Um, uh, well, it's just you don't lose anything from trying your hardest to be good faith. There's, there's really no reason not to try. It's rare that that will actually, like, backfire. Well, and you well, but, yeah. there have been several times on EFAB where we've come across a statement where we can't figure out what else they could have meant, but we, like, almost refuse to believe that they meant what they said. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, they, pro they almost certainly meant X or Y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they meant something that wasn't what they said, because <laughs> it, it couldn't yep. have been what they said. Um, SOF has zero conspiracy theories in it, so Sound of Freedom. Uh, it's about a real case in Colombia. The movie itself is a solid 7 out of 10. Every criticism is lol, fear-mongering, QAnon, cringe, when that's 100% not what this movie is. I've heard from many people that Sound of Freedom isn't, like, bent in a particular direction. It's a very normal movie about stopping trafficking. Like, it's not got much more to it than that, at least from what I heard, but... YBS was talking about marketing, uh... After the film, I think? Or before it? It was, like, marketing reactions, like, conspiracy theories surrounding the film, and kind yeah. of, like, its place in the political discourse, which... You're like, yeah, I mean, I... I, I don't know. Uh, Sound of Freedom Ticket Sales Fund, Tim Bollard's Foundation. I don't exactly know what that means. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Started the stream late, so I'm about three hours behind y'all, and holy Moses, chat is mad. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. They were, they they were, were pissed off. Uh, they were, they were big mad. Big mad. I know I'm late to the drama, but I never wanted to hear any of these socialist Twitch React streamers complain about CEOs stealing labor anymore. Damn. True. Oh my God. That's like a different arc, bro. Which will probably have extra chapters, don't you worry. This is what happens when you start with an emotional response. Um, yeah, I mean, you want to, that's another bias check. You got to be careful about your emotions. They can fucking destroy your uh, ability to see straight. 
YMS, you don't record movies I like, or recommend movies I like, so you're bad, obviously. Well, there you go. Simple as that. YMS left for the bathroom. Okay. Goodbye. First live EFAP. Whoop. Sweet. Dude, YMS is cringe yeah. as fuck. Supporting Sound of Freedom and being anti-ST is far more virtuous than whatever the fuck Hollywood is doing. We would all like kids to be safe. Um... I, I think what his point was made sense. I just don't like uh, how he interpreted Drinker for what he said. It's just, it was obvious Drinker wouldn't agree with the sentiment that you support a film just because of what it's supposed to be about. That's just not, not something you would believe. Like I said, I'm 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 good faith enough to believe there's no one on earth who believes that. They might even there might be some people who claim it, but the, I don't think there's I everyone. Think, I think you could just have a conversation with them and they would instantly go, "Oh yeah, I mean of course." Yeah. Like, if the yeah. film sucks, it sucks, regardless of what the subject matter is. Yeah, you just get extreme hypotheticals, like, what if it's, like, hostile, but at the end they say friendship is magic. It's just like, you know, yeah, it's fucking, of course. Mm. Friendship is magic. Friendship is magical. Sound of Freedom is being rejected by one side because of its subject matter, so what Drinker said is incredibly fair. He was just commenting casually on the fact that it got incredibly controversial and it doesn't seem clear as to why, and then you look into it and it's connected to what one of the actors has said publicly about certain things, I think. That's what it was, right? I think it was, like, Jim Caviezel, so. like, yeah. had an interview where he said some stuff that was, like, much more modern-day, relevant, like, politics stuff. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, I guess it sounds like... I Like, I really don't know much about, like, that film or any of the controversies surrounding it. I'm in favor of YMS encouraging people to watch films that are not mainstream. I'm working really hard on a graphic novel, and my biggest fear is no one having a chance to read it. Yeah, it's tough to get art out there. Mm-hmm. Discoverability, yeah, it's, that's the thing, you know, with the internet. You know, the, the flip side of having so much content at your fingertips is that content, you know, creators are in a... I mean, there's a lot of fish in that, you know, big ocean, and it can be hard to sort of find your place, so to speak. Uh, if Adam had watched more Drinker vids, he could point that Drinker always highlights his dislike for the message and is in fact engaging in low-level hypocrisy for liking the message of Sound of Freedom. I mean, again, that's not... That's, <laughs> Drinker wouldn't categorize this shit this way, but you can definitely uh, broaden it all out to be that. It's kind of like the whole Drinker likes it when they remake stuff that's good and do well, but he doesn't like it when they remake things badly and yet and doesn't advocate for remakes. It's like, wow, hypocrisy. It's just like, you can't... At all figure out what might be the position at all. You're just gonna give up. And then sometimes you wonder, it's like you're just looking for something of an inconsistency. It's like you want one. Mm. Which sucks. YMS needs to convince Mola that film festivals are worth it. Uh he needs to convince me that film festivals are worth it as much as I need to convince him that book festivals or game festivals are worth it. That is to say, I don't think he goes to those. But that doesn't mean he doesn't understand their value. I know the value of a film festival. I still don't want to go to one. Um, the only way I'm going to one is going to be with friends. And even then, if it, even like I then, said, if it was us three, and we were meeting oh, up for the doing, first time doing that, yeah. I'd be like, maybe we should be doing other things. Yeah, there's no fucking way that if we met up in real life, then then we would be spending it watching... Film yeah, festivals. Mean, we it would be like a like a live recording of us watching like the, the top three movies requested from the audience. Absolutely, yeah. that's the kind it'd of be like going to a shooting range for sure. Yeah, yeah, we'd be doing something like that. Go axe be throwing because it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, if that was in good faith, what is his bad faith? Who knows. Did you ask YMS if he likes Le Fromage? I'm sure he does. Le Fromage. Le Fromage. Review the scene from Get Him to the Greek. You spilled my medicine. You might need a minute either side for context, but give the scene a watch. I remember finding Get Him to the Greek funny. Uh, I, I haven't seen it in a while, though. I saw, it all, I saw it when it came out, and I remember liking it, but I don't actually remember much about it other than Stroke the Furry Wall. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that as well. Uh, our tax from Never Ending Story is best horse, and then last super chat is false. Epona is best horse, and then Bucephalus is best horse. The previous Bucephalus. super chat is wrong. Tyrek Lannister is best horse, also high rags. Hello, so many horses. That is a lot of horses. 
Uh, YMS misrepresentation and goalpost shifting to optics. Wow. Man, same thing would be said about drinkers, same thing would be said about us. I'd just rather have references with your arguments instead of stuff like that, because it just, I don't know, it just doesn't feel very constructive. YMS self-report arcane is literally 9 out of 10. It's pretty good. Quitting an episode 2 is like, damn. That's damn. The, it's the meme, it's the mining <laughs> meme, where you, you quit right before all the diamonds. Yeah, the diamonds, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and plus, the first two episodes are good. They are good. Um, it's just that three is obviously once you get. Uh, Might as well stop, but that would baffle me. Apu, Mo, Marge, Hell, even Krusty are all relatable. I would argue that the, all the characters of The Simpsons are relatable in some way, shape, or form because they're all stereotypes. They're all their existences are all like caricatures of real life experiences that we're aware of. Um, they try to humanize them all in different stories. You know, here and there, while also trying to make it funny. Um, Simpsons is awesome in that way. I recommend it. Certainly the earlier seasons. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you guys thought on Alita Battle Angel, but I'd say she is probably a pretty good, strong female character in recent times. I to... kind of found that movie like, eh. I thought the movie was Possibly. lame, but I'd have to rewatch it to say more. I have not seen it, but it's probably lame. Um. Oh Trinity equals Flynn entangled, designed by a committee of women to be love interest. He's a good character who begins and ends the plot similarly to how Trinity does for Neo. Execution, not intent. Flynn entangled. Oh yeah, I remember him. I He's... remember like entangled quite a bit. I remember liking it too. Yeah. Uh, Llama Man bad. <gasps> Great content oh. that I'd illegally give Did money to. It's a shame YouTube on iPhone won't allow a specific payable amount. Such much, twenty nine seven ninety nine to sixty nine ninety nine. Very disparate results. Still something I'd pay money for. All right. Just wanted to say I completed your Outlast series, Mola. Very thorough analysis. I enjoyed it. Playing RE seven right now. It should be better, right? RE seven is better than Outlast. Yes, I think. I think I would conclude that. Yeah, but it's. I don't know. I, I'm still like when I look back on RE7, I'm just like, man, it's that like opening third, and even then, it's got problems. I mean, if you were gonna play one again, oh, out of like Outlast or RE7, RE7 probably. I think, I yeah, because Outlast same. doesn't. Because I didn't get, I didn't get far into Outlast before I'm like, oh, I see what kind of game this is. I'm going to go do something else now, yeah. and so I did. Hassan has promoted objectivism more than Mola. Um, has he? Well, has he? <laughs> I mean, he must have, because I don't promote objectivism at all. Well, yeah, that's that's true. I, I don't even know why there was... I was just thinking about the part of, does he even do it to, like, a degree that is, you know, like, sizable? <laughs> Not that... When's the last time we had a conversation about objectivism on EFAP? <laughs> we do it all the time, what do you mean? Oh yeah, that's right. I mean, we did it just this stream, actually. We had a conversation about objectivism. Um, didn't the drinker like Boiling Point? He loved it. He thought it was great. Recommended Boiling it. Boiling Point is top tier. Yeah. Everyone yeah. should go see Boiling Point. Obi-Wan was old. Oh yeah. Like, when characters are old, what else are you gonna do? Uh, comments like that make me want to die. I'm just to uh, ruin them and they want to kill themselves and die. You know how old people are. <laughs> Those fucking olds. National Treasure did this right. I'm not exactly sure what they're referring to, I'm afraid. Well, my critters are burnt to hell and back. This stream has been pretty damn crispy. Some of the arguments why Mesa makes are interesting. Yeah, interesting. That's fair. Yeah, okay. I'm not passing the torch. I'm handing over the ashes. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. YMS, not all of HW writers are malicious for sure, but why do you think they're all only bad writers and there is absolutely no bad faith, despite some mentioning publicly that they have disdain for these characters and even the fans? He's just not aware of the comments. He doesn't look into this stuff. He doesn't care about it, which is fair. Like, you don't have to care about it. It's just awkward when you make claims about it when you don't know about it. Like the crazy fucking statements you can find from people who get involved in more modern projects related to whatever. I'm not sure what HW stands for in that context, but hey. I don't believe in hell, but if I did, it would be having to listen to YMS dig his own grave for hours on end. 
Oh, come on. Yeah. If hell existed, it would be way worse than that. It would be like... You'd have to... It would be like watching Velma or something, you know? Or just, you know, just being consistently prodded with a, uh, just like with a, with a little, um, okay. trident, just like, yeah. yeah. Is it a, is it a trident? I think is it Devil a, has a trident, right? Or is it called something else? Oh, a pitchfork, yeah, that's Normally right. Normally it's, it's referred to as a pitchfork. Huh. What's the difference between a pitchfork it could and be, a trident? Is it the number of, uh... Probably it it's, the, it's usage. There are differences in the shapes. A pitchfork oh, and a trident are not, they're shaped similarly but they are different. A pitchfork usually has more smaller prongs that are curved, almost like um, like, like a scoop shape. And a trident well, normally like is like a spear is... that's just got multiple prongs yeah, on that... it. Because it calls it a three-pronged spear, and, that, and I guess it's because it's, yeah, it's used for spear fishing, whereas a pitchfork is, you know, for farming, agriculture. Well, the more you know... Yeah, this is some interesting stuff. There's loads of information here. The Devil's Pitchfork can be referred to as the Bill Vet, also known as the Devil's Tuning Fork, an impossible object and optical illusion. Oh, I, I know the optical illusion they're refer referring to. Hmm. Um, let's see, just a second. Uh, let me pull it up real quick. Yeah, because a trident is considered a three-pronged spear. is used for spear yeah. fishing, and it's, it's like it's it's about what these things are used for. Is how they're categorized. I think that's the main thing. Yeah, and then oh. that a trident a trident must have three, whereas a pitchfork could have more than three. Look at that! That's the impossible object, huh? Well, it's what not so the... impossible because oh I can see it. Oh my god! What is this illusion? Wow. It hurts my eyes. My, oh my god, I am struggling here. I gotta tell you, that's, <laughs> that's what is that this is a madness? crazy illusion. Oh my god! I do feel like if you drew that down in a particular age of humanity's existence, you might get burned. <laughs> you burn, they burn you. What have you done? You're like, no, 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 no. It makes me a wizard or whatever. Good thing. Praise me. A good wizard. Yeah, I'm not an evil witch. <laughs> or they're just like witchcraft, no wizardry. It's a, it's an important distinction. And they're like, oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, wizards are cool. You can't criticize Thor: Love and Thunder. It's just a comedy. It was hilarious when Jane Foster died. I can't remember exactly what this is a response to, but fair enough. Yeah, there's definitely parts of that you're supposed to take seriously in that movie. Uh, did you already collect fan art for the anniversary? Um. Yeah, because this would have been before the anniversary and before we did coverage of a meme fap after it, I think. Or we've got a meme fap to come. Either way, yes, I think. I'm proud to say I've never watched this man's videos. Don't know if that means drinker or YMS, but fair enough, I suppose. Word Association Brexit backstabbed. Oh, all right. Fair enough. Uh, got home, started the stream, took a nap, went to my buddy's, cooked dinner, came home, realized the stream was still on. Five years, love your videos, and listen to Fringy's Endgame. Great all the way. Oh, that's oh, nice. Well, yeah, good video. What are your top five stories, movies excluded? Sama. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, get that out of the way. Hmm. Well, Buffy vs. Story from start to finish, I guess I would consider that. In there. Oh, uh, I was considering Ragnarok, and I'm like, well, the story's fine. I I think it's the characters that I really really love about it. Um, it's not the story. Um, wait, what? Story to me is encompassing characters, plot, world, theme. Likewise. All right. Um, is it not to you? Uh, I just I figure it's a, a decent distinction. Uh, so I didn't know if it was included or not. Um, um, well, Haunting a Blind Man is going to be up there for me, because uh, if we've erased movies, yeah. obviously I'm just going by TV shows and games, and my top stories for games are going to be Ragnarok and Soma, and then films, uh, sorry, games, uh, bleh, where am I fucking, where am I going here, TV shows, uh, Buffyverse, Bly, Breaking Bad, uh, I mean, Lord of the Rings is up there, um, yeah, you can take the books for Lord of the Rings if we don't get the films. Anything else? One Let me other. see. Um, uh, ba, 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 ba. I'm thinking of books here. Uh, did we mention Arcane? 
<laughs> on that Pain, list. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Nah, I don't, I don't want to pause too long. I guess I just I would just have to stop and think of you know the books that would rank in the tip tip top. Yeah. The problem is I kind of want to I I don't want to keep trying to answer these questions off the top of my head. Yeah. Honestly. Like your favorite this, your favorite that. Yeah. yeah. It does get a little like you know. Yeah. It gets tough sometimes. I want to sit and think. Yeah, that's fair. Hopefully those answers give you an idea, though. Um, Oppenheimer is in my top ten improves on each watch. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. And I'm giving chat a six out of ten. YMS, probably. Oh, I don't think he'd be that generous. Nah, he, he wouldn't give us that high. <laughs> that would be a high. That'd be a higher rating than... <laughs> the last crusade though. <laughs> so. <laughs> Not sure what the consensus is on this, but I think it was a pretty constructive. Very glad it happened. Here's to more YMS on EFAB. Yeah. Y'all should do bath bath duckies, ragu duck, plague ductor, and moople duck. It would be a bath for the ages. Oh yeah, you could bring us into the bath with us. Or with you. You could have us there with you. We'd just be floating up top. Yeah, because you wouldn't want to do suds, it with them. Right? You wouldn't want to do it with the plushies, because then you got to dry them off every time. Yep, you could have us little, like the little holes on the bill, so you can squirt water. Um. So, Pokemon of the day was Gibble, or Gible, I assume it's Gible. And they said this is not a child eater or a soul eater of any kind. They just wanted to oh. let us know about the guy because his name was funny. Hmm. There he goes. It looks like a piranha alligator kind of mix, you know? It's like, like Gengar. Shark. He's okay. Yeah, he does kind of have a Gengar look. Yeah, I kind of like him. Yeah, he's neat. I'm Approved. sure they'll discover what children he eats or what soul mm -hmm. he steals or something like mm -hmm. that. Like we'll hope so. terrible crimes against morality, you know. <laughs> well, alrighty. And that was the last message. So thank you all for your kind donations and messages and company. Hopefully we shall see you in whatever it is we get up to next. But for now, we shall say goodbye. Toodle pip. Yeah, see you everybody. Yeah, goodbye everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>